Hello and welcome back. My name is Verena. I was planning to come on here today and do a little review of this book. There. But a different topic has, has caught my eye, which I would rather talk about and do my book review next time. Now, I've noticed looking back over my old videos, uh, a lot of the time when I'm grasping for, for the next word or sentence and I'm not quite sure what to say, I fill the, the gap by going, uh, mm, uh, and I sound like a herd of sheep and it's really irritating. So to try and get out of this habit, I have actually written down a little script and I'm going to simply read from the script until, until I've become a little more professional. So here goes. Some of you may know that I'm planning to build a channel for the more mature community where we can get together and discuss topics that matter to us in the second half of life. To me, brain health is one of them because I've had to watch both my mother and my grandmother struggle with, with an extreme form of forgetfulness. I don't want to label it Alzheimer's or dementia because it was never properly diagnosed. But I do know that sometimes they simply could not make connections in the brain to, to memories, words, people that were stored in there somewhere, but they, they couldn't access it anymore. And for both of them, it was immensely frustrating and upsetting and also angry making. And so when I see some information that, that can potentially help me avoid the pitfalls of, of my brain disobeying, uh, I pay attention and and sort of read up about it. So I have seen, I, I subscribe to a science news service. I get an email every day with reports of, really it's mostly research papers, the latest scientific research. A lot of it is well over my head because I'm, I'm not a scientist or a health professional, a doctor. In fact, I'm so bad at sciences, I nearly, I was nearly kept back for a year because my my maths and chemistry were so poor that uh, it was only because I was really really good in other subjects that a sort of a teachers conference decided to sort of shove me into the next year so I have I have absolutely I don't come from a place of being qualified of talking about science medical health issues but I can read I can read research. So I'm simply going to read this today. So today I would like to talk about the connection between the herpes virus family, which is shingles, cold sores, chicken pox, etc. Probably some I've never heard of and I, I won't now sort of research in any depth. Um, but when I found this item, which was published in Frontiers in Aging Neuroscience, I decided to simply read you the passages from it so I don't talk rubbish. Now, I have to declare an interest since I, I used to suffer from cold sores as, as a younger person and they pretty much managed to ruin my summer holidays every year. The minute the sun came out and I would spend time in the sun and the forest and, and the seaside, I would have this crop of hideous looking, painful weepy lumps that would take forever to go away and you couldn't cover it and it looked awful and I, I felt really unhappy and self-conscious and you, you kind of you feel like typhoid Mary and you have to be aware that other people are kind of going and don't want to catch what you have so it's not a nice thing to have particularly for a young person so uh, it took a while until I realized that there were actually antivirals that you could take to prevent to prevent a, an attack, a relapse. And I went to my doctor and she prescribed something which is very commonly available. It's, it's an old drug that's been knocking around for ages. It is quite harmless apparently. You can take it for years without, without any problems. I certainly haven't come across any drawback. It's fine with my stomach, my, my liver values are fine, it doesn't make me drowsy. I mean, there's nothing. I take it twice a, year, twice a day. It is, where is the box? 
this, uh, which is a bog standard antiviral. It's 400 milligrams of acyclovir. I take it every morning and every evening. I try to space it evenly to, you know, to keep to keep the to keep the level going. I, I don't want sort of dips. I don't think your body stores it for any length of time, so you have to sort of make sure to take it regularly. Uh, it's uh, not particularly expensive, particularly, you know, compared with the cost of of looking after older people with memory problems. That's, that's going to be a massive burden to global health services in the future. So now I'm rambling and I've lost my I've lost my spot. Okay, so I'm simply going to quote the 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 article on the research. Herpes viruses are the dreaded gift that keeps on giving. They remain lifelong in our neurons and immune cells, reactivating and resurfacing in characteristic blisters when we are run down by stress or illness. Most people are infected by herpes simplex 1 by the time they reach old age. Then I'm, I'm skipping a whole lot of sort of medical bump and details about the results of some studies. And I'd like to pick up here. The studies found that HSV1 causes protein deposits characteristic of Alzheimer's, plaques between neurons and the tangles inside them. The good news is antiviral drugs can prevent this. Now, the results of these studies relate to people with severe herpes infections. And Joe Ordinary, like me, who sort of gets gets regular outbreaks, but it's, you know, it's sort of normal runnings, really. No research has been, has taken place so far, although it's apparently in the making. So, uh, I, I control my, my herpes with this antiviral. And I am very much hoping that it protects my brain from Alzheimer's. So, I... I have to be realistic, I'm probably going to be taking this medication forever. Or at least, maybe sometimes they, someday they will find a cure that can actually knock the virus out of my body. But nowhere near at the moment. I have to accept that it's lying dormant somewhere in my central nervous system. And I need to be immaculate about controlling it and stopping it coming back for you know as long as possible. So... If you are affected by herpes, you may want to troll the internet about about the research. There are some, some videos on YouTube about it, and there's lots of articles, and who knows, there's probably even a TED talk about it. So I will keep a beady eye on, on items relating to this, because it's simply going to affect me forever. And... If I find something new and fascinating, I will pop back up here and, and, and tell you about it. And uh, next time I will post the, the book review. And thank you for listening and see you next time.